Hello everyone! Hope you're ready for another adventure, because Wayne continues to read The One and Only Ivan by Catherine Applegate. Always remember that as we read along, all you have to do is hit that CC button in your YouTube link to be able to follow along. Are you ready to jump in? Because I am. But I wonder who's going to join us as we begin to finish this story. <gasps> it's Bob. I thought we didn't, weren't going to see you after that last chapter. I'm glad that you were able to stop by and see us today. Are you ready to jump in, Bob? Awesome. Bob's ready. Are you? Let's begin. Still there. I cover my eyes. I look again. They are still there. Watching. Every day, I watch them through my window, the way my visitors used to watch me. See how they chase groom? See how they play? Sleep? See how they live? They're graceful, the way Stella was, moving just enough, only as much as they need. They stare at me, heads tilted, pointing and hooting, and I wonder, are they fascinated by me, as I am by them? She. Her hoots make my ears hurt. I admire her intact canines from afar. Her name is Kenyani. She is faster than I am, spry and probably smarter, although I am twice her size, and that is important. She is terrifying and beautiful, like a painting that moves. Door. Today the humans lead me to a door. On the other side, Kenyani and the others wait for me. I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready to be a silverback. I'm Ivan. Just Ivan. Only Ivan. I decide it's not a good day to socialize. I'll try again tomorrow. All night, I lie awake, wondering about Ruby. Has she already walked through a door like the one I'm facing? Was she as scared as I am? Scared the way she must have been that day she fell in the hole? I think of Ruby's endless curiosity and the questions she loved to ask. Have you ever danced with a tiger, Ivan? Will your fur turn blue? Why doesn't that little boy have a tail? If Ruby were here with me, she'd be asking, What's on the other side of the door, Ivan? Ruby would want to know, and she would have been through that door by now. Ready. Want to try again, Ivan? My ass. I think of Ruby, and I tell myself it's time. The door opens. Outside at last. Sky, grass, tree, ant, stick, bird, dirt, cloud, wind, flower, rock, rain, mine, mine, mine. Oops. I sniff, approach, strut a bit, but the others don't welcome me. They have sharp teeth and loud voices. What did I do wrong? Kinyani chases me. She throws a stick at me. She corners me. I know she's testing me to see if I'm a true silverback, one who can protect the family. I cower and hide my eyes. Maya lets me go back into my cage. What it was like. I lie awake trying to remember what it was like being a gorilla. How did we move? How did we touch? How did we know who was boss? I try to think past the babies and motorbikes and the popcorn and the short pants. I try to imagine Ivan as he might have been. Pretending. The juvenile male approaches. He's eyeing my food hungrily. I imagine a different Ivan, my father's son. I grumble and swat and swagger. I beat my chest till the whole world hears. Kinyani watches me, and so do the others. I move towards the young upstart, and he retreats. 
almost as if he believes I'm the silverback I'm pretending to be. Nest. I'm making a nest on the ground. It isn't a true jungle nest. The leaves are inferior and the sticks are brittle. They snap and I weave them into place. The others watch, grunting their disapproval. Too small, too flimsy, an ugly thing to see. But when I climb into my leafy cradle, it's like floating in treetop mist. More TV. Maya wants me to go back into my glass cage, I can tell, because she is tempting me towards the door with a trail of tiny marshmallows. I try to ignore her. I don't want to leave the outside. It's a cloudless day, and I've found just the right spot for a nap. But I relent as she adds yogurt raisins to the trail. She knows my weakness all too well. In the glass cage, the TV is on. It's another nature show, jerky and unfocused. I expect to see gorillas, but none appear. I hear a shrill sound, like a toy trumpet. My heart quickens. I rush to the screen, and there she is. Ruby. She is rolling in a lovely pool of mud with two other young elephants. Another elephant approaches. She towers over Ruby. She strokes Ruby, nudges her. She makes soft noises. They stand side by side, just the way Stella and Ruby used to do. Their trunks intertwine. I see something new in Ruby's eyes. And I know what that is. It's joy. I watch the whole thing, and then Maya plays it again for me, and again. At last, she turns off the TV and carries it out of the cage. I put my hand on the glass. Maya looks over. Thank you, I try to say with my eyes. Thank you. It. Kenyani ambles towards me. She taps me on the shoulder, and Knuckle runs away. I watch her, arms crossed over my chest, careful not to make a sound. I'm not sure what we're doing. She ambles back, shoves at me, dashes past, and then I realize what's happening. We're playing. We're playing tag. And I'm it. Romance. Make eye contact, show your form, strut, grunt, throw a stick, grunt some more, Make some moves. Romance is hard. It looks so easy on TV. I'm not sure I will ever get the hang of it. More about romance. I wish Bob was here. I could use some advice. I try to recall all the romance movies we watched together. I remember the talking, the hugging, the face licking. I'm not very good at this, but it's fun trying. Grooming. Is there anything sweeter than the touch of another as she pulls a dead bug from your fur? Thankfully, I don't know. Do you know Bob? Okay, maybe Ivan used to do that for Bob. Pretty cool. Talk. Gorillas aren't chatty like humans, prone to gossip and bad jokes. But now and again, we swap a story under the sun. One day it's my turn. I tell my troop about Mac and Ruby and Bob and Stelia and Julia and George, about my mother and father and sister. When I'm done, they look away silent. Kenyani moves closer. Her shoulder brushes mine and we let the sun soak into our fur together. The top of the hill. I've explored every nook and cranny of this place except for the hill at the far end where the workers have been repairing a wall. They're finally gone. They've left behind a fresh white brick in a mound of black dirt. While the others laze in the morning sun, I want to explore the hilltop. They've been there before, and I have not. Everything is still fresh to my eyes. I take my time going uphill, savoring the feel of grass on my knuckles. The breeze carries the shouts of children and the drowsy hum of bumblebees. Near the top of the hill is a low-limbed tree 
the kind my sister would have loved. The wall is endless, clean and white, stretching far down into the habitats beyond my own. It's high and wide, carefully built to keep us in and the others out. This is, after all, still a cage. It rained last night. The pile of dirt is so soft to touch. I scoop up a handful and breathe in the loamy smell. It's a rich brown color, heavy and cool in my palm. The wall waits like an endless blank billboard. Oh, we're gonna get some writing. The wall. It's a big wall, but it's a big pile of dirt and I'm a big artist. I slap handfuls of mud on the warm cement. I make a handprint. I tap my nose with my muddy finger. I make a nose print. I slide my palms up and down. The th mud is thick and hard to use, but I keep moving and scooping and spreading. I don't want know what I'm making, and I don't care. I make swoops and swirls, thick lines, figures and shapes, light and shadow. I'm an artist at work. When I'm done, I step back to m admire my work. It's a large canvas, and I'd like to get a better view. I go to the thick limb tree and grab the lowest branch, try to swing my legs. <clears throat> I land hard. I'm too big to climb, I suppose. I try again anyway, and this time I pull myself onto the first limb, grasping for breath. One more limb, two. I can't go any further. Perched halfway up the tree, I see my troop still dozing contentedly. I take in the wall, splattered and splashed with mud. Not much color, but lots of movement. I like it. Feels dreamy and wild, like something Julia might have made. From my seat in the tree, I can see beyond the wall. I see giraffes and hippos. I see deer with legs like delicate twigs. I see bear snoozing on a hollow log. I see elephants. I think that is a great place for us to end. What do you think about your buddy's new environment, Bob? I'm excited for him too. And hopefully we'll be able to see you again. I think that there's another book with your name on it. Hopefully we'll catch you for that adventure. Bye bye buddy. And we hope to see you on the next adventure here with Wayne Reads. Thank you so much for joining us. We can't wait to see you again. Bye-bye.